Oh, no, she has the regretful hangover, thinking, "Oh my God, what happened last night?" <laughs> 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 Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Dean and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. And today we're going to take you beyond the Photoshop basics. We have Christian Bensalam once again, the Filipino phenom, the book cover artist extraordinaire. Now, Christian, this one, it seems a bit different. It's very wide. Is this a book cover project or is it something different? Uh, this is a project uh, made specifically for our channel. Oh, wow. Really? Ah, so yeah. that's why you've done it in a in a thumbnail orientation. Yep, a lot of freedom for me. <laughs> oh, I like it. So yeah, I feel I feel special. This is a I did not know this by the way, guys. All you guys watching at home, I didn't know he did this specifically yeah. for the channel. That's amazing. Tell me a bit about this piece. What we what have we got going on here? Uh, you know me. I mean, I love uh, a lot of uh, dark stuff. Yeah, uh, some horror stuff or something. So I mean, I've been doing a lot of fantasy genre. So. Yeah, I did it specifically actually for the channel so that everyone will see uh, a basic uh, process of my matte painting techniques. Uh, cool. A lot of, uh, you know, some blending techniques. So as well. this is more of a, a environmental and landscape piece and you wanted to show yes. guys on the channel uh, that you've got a bit of range, that it's not all just fantasy girls with flying hair, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I like it, I like it. I do environment uh, stuff as well. The, the, the time is just my, you know, my enemy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I'm really glad that you uh, turned this in for us. So yeah, those clouds, I recognize them. I've used those clouds loads of times. <laughs> really? Yeah, you, yeah. Good, ominous clouds. Um, oh, yeah. I, I'm sure they look like clouds that I've used. There is, there's a certain cloud stock that I've just used over and over again for for countless photo manipulations where did you download it like from um there was one on adobe stock there was a really good cloud asset that was on deviant art that was a paid asset that i used for years and it, it just seemed to work with everything but it's that kind of ominous gray cloud that is true you know i, I have a lot of sky stocks but i uh, i keep on using all uh, i mean specific uh ones like that like the the one that you can see I, exactly I and it's just time. like the clouds that i use i'll tell you what i've just come up with an amazing idea what if for uh neo stock and fat manipulation.com we created mm -hmm. a cloud bundle that was nothing but really dramatic clouds i bet there would be people that would go mad for that i think that is a good idea oh, i think you it's know? a good idea i'm gonna write it down after this video <laughs> <laughs> you know uh you know there's a lot of uh, skies out there i mean uh uh stocks but i keep on yep. using that one because uh it's so dramatic that you can even use it a a anywhere you know i think we can do something like that as well so that uh, people can just use our uh our sky stocks for most of times maybe i really liked what you did with the um with the brush uh removing the the grass uh, you masked mm -hmm. it out you added a layer mask to the figure and then mm -hmm. you use a brush to kind of create the illusion that the figure is walking through the grass. Yeah, that is true. So that, that it will look more realistic rather than looking like the, the man is flying or hovering. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any ideas? Um, what was the concept for this one? Uh, technically, what I had in mind was a woman uh, kneeling on the center or in the back on, on the background. So you like to work with uh, puddles. You use your you use puddles on your kind of haunted house piece, and use quite similar techniques to what you're doing here. Yeah, that is correct. How how come you you notice it? <laughs> no, I've, I um, when I do my react videos and I watch these, I, I really have to pay attention because I'm relaying the information to people watching. Yeah, and I I, I remember quite a lot, man. Um, and so yeah, the, the techniques that you used on this were very similar to the foreground puddle, puddle techniques on your kind of haunted house, uh, dark art, horror composite. <laughs> that is true, bro. You're so, you're so awesome. <laughs> I see that you like to use for the blending of the kind of uh, ground elements, a nice <clears throat> soft edge brush. 
Um, mm -hmm. not, nothing, and a layer mask, nothing majorly fancy there, but it really does get the results. Where did you score these trees from? Uh, Adobe stock? Yeah, Adobe stock, uh, technically. Uh, so, yeah, if you can see here, uh, it's kind of weird that I've been doing. So, I, I actually, I didn't know uh, what how I'm did doing. How did you do that well. with the brush? Because that, that, that looked like a brush you was using. Yep. Uh, actually, I found it online. Uh, I mean... I figured out that you can actually use a photo to make it a brush. Yeah, if you can see here, uh, I'm now so using the So you the only trees. use a brush to give the position and you don't use the brush as the final treat? Yes, that is correct. That's interesting. I do a similar thing and I call it comping, where I take a low resolution version and I put it in position and then I think, yeah, does that work? And then I grab the proper one and then I cut it out mm -hmm. properly. So yeah, similar yeah, yeah. to what I do. Um, guys, we're going to be releasing a PNG um, tree, shrub, and flower bundle very soon. On Red Oan's course, we're going to be giving away a massive sampler pack. But mm -hmm. on Neo Stock, we're going to have a whole bunch. Well, we got a whole bunch of PNG trees right now. They're brilliant. But it's going to be put together as a bundle. I'm going to have to make sure you get that full bundle, Christian, because you're going to love it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I will. Levels. I don't see many people use levels these days. I know that levels gets a bad rep, but I really like levels. It's fast. Uh, actually, yeah, for me as well, it's kind of, you know, when you adjust the, uh, I mean, the levels, you you, you, you kind of blend it so fast. Unlike using curves, curves is a bit complicated for me. It's a bit complicated for me as well. I'm glad there's one other person on planet Earth the same <laughs> as me. Level is, be is better than curves. Um, yes. you'll have a lot of people in the comments arguing with you about that. Pixinperfect said that curves are way better than levels, so, you know. <laughs> it's all different. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of ways on Photoshop. It's complicated, you know. I always say that every video. There is 10,000 ways to skin the proverbial cat. Uh, yeah, that's true. You can just uh, do... Uh, the uh the the thing i mean the way you want uh you feel better you you feel easier as long as you're you're doing the job absolutely you know? and can you uh tell the guys the reason why those background trees are not as uh contrasty as the ones in the foreground uh what do you mean bro um so the the trees closer to us are darker and sharper and the trees in the background oh, yeah are softer and lighter why is that uh actually based from my uh you know i do a lot of art stuff based from observa uh, observations yep uh that's what i've learned as well from uh, uh, i mean for doing environmental stuff as you can see uh if you're if you are on the scene i mean on a foggy forest or something if yep. you look closely or if you observe closely uh the closer trees uh from you has more contrast and then when you go uh look further yep. it's more like a uh you know a, a very blur a blurry one or foggy one so that's, so that's the atmospheric haze and distance that and the further back it goes the 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 less contrasty and yes yes yep. uh you, you explain it correctly yeah so, we, we've discussed this on the channel many many times but i always ask that same question just in case someone tunes in that hasn't watched our videos before and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll want to know, that'll be helpful to them. And I also noticed you use some really nice fog and smoke overlays. Can you tell me a bit about that, please? Oh, yeah. First of all, I, I downloaded it from Neostop. <laughs> yep. Because, you know, Neostop provides, you know, uh, uh, Neostop uh, uh, specializes this kind of uh, uh, genre. For example, this environmental stuff, the fog and the haze, uh, it fits very perfectly on what I'm, for, uh, from what I've been doing. I've noticed from your recent works that you've been using those fog overlays quite a lot, which is awesome. Yeah, because you know it, it is so realistic. I love that stuff uh, that Neostack Neo stuff has. Well, the good thing about it is, is that it's a stock photography platform created by active artists for artists you know um you i don't know, know yeah. if there's any stock pr platforms that's actually being run by current active artists in the game so mm. yeah it's, 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 it's the unique angle that neo stock has in the foreground will you be applying 
any blur to this at all or will you be keeping it in focus uh based from what i remember i put a uh, blurring effect on this one I, i think most of the time i used a uh, blurring effect on the front i mean an element uh on the front of my artworks because it gives the you know the dramatic effect like the camera cinematic effect or something yep. like that so it really works usually for environmental stuff and i actually use this uh, use it as well for book cover stuff to add more drama or to add more feeling on it so and it really adds darkness, a, a lot. you 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 pulled the um the darkness slider down on the levels added a clipping mask so the levels mm -hmm. was limited to the pixels of the fence only to add a clipping mask is alt and click between layers yeah yeah so that the one that you want to adjust with is uh, will be specifically for i mean for that object only using do the you, clipping do mask. you ever use a layer group with a layer mask on to selectively apply um adjustments or textures to a particular object or is it only clipping masks actually i'm i am familiar with layer groups or something but i'm more con i mean it feels more easier for me to use a clipping mask instead you know you said there's a lot of ways doing this kind of stuff but absolutely you know, yeah i use clipping mask all the time because i'm comfortable with it i'm yeah, used to it absolutely i've um kind of only just recently started using clipping masks more i i don't use clipping masks when there's loads and loads and loads of adjustments i will create a layer group create a mask based on the object below mm -hmm. and the reason why i don't like using loads of clipping masks is because sometimes it's tricky when you want to move things between those uh -huh. layers yeah. and it knocks yes. the clipping mask off and it can be a bit tricky sometimes mm -hmm. that's a disadvantage of it but you know wherever you feel comfortable Can I ask why you're using a chalky brush on this um the, the cast lighting from the lantern as opposed to any other type of brush? Why did you use a chalky brush? Uh I feel like uh a textured one would be more dramatic for me. You know, I like a painted stuff as well. So, you know, I can also apply the painting uh stuff that I want to. Yep. It's just actually for my own preference only. Uh, where did you get that? Are you using chalk gritty? Where, where where did you get that brush from? Is that another random one that you acquired over the years? Uh, I downloaded it from an artist that I've been following a few years ago. Who is the artist? I think uh, his name is Noah Bradley. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, the actual brush itself looks very similar to a, a brush that Imad One likes to use. Yes, uh I think yeah, it's it's almost the same thing, almost the same brush as well. Because after watching Imad Awan's flow, I, I noticed that he he favors that kind of chalky textured yeah. brush as opposed to something soft or airbrushy. More like a textured one, right? I've um, only just noticed the um livestock animal there. <laughs> But, yeah, this does tell a picture of this story. There's it's very mysterious. There's something yeah. going on here. There's something weird going on. That's one of the, uh, I mean, the the fun doing environmental stuff because you have to tell a story, uh, using just by using an artwork. So that's what I that I did uh, for our channel. Something that uh, an artwork telling a story. Something yeah, like that. It looks like a, a Netflix original series, some kind <laughs> of Swedish crime drama. Yeah, it's, it's got uh, that vibe to me. Technically, uh, when I started this project, I thought of the woman like a witch or something, or something okay. like a a monstrous like who killed the the deer on the on the on the artwork. Yeah, and then it could I'm, be I, a shapeshifter. She's just woken up from from becoming some kind of yeah, like something like that. Wolf or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, actually, she killed the uh, that deer on the foreground, and then a man and, just to figure out what. what And now, now she has the regretful hangover, thinking, "Oh my God, what happened last night?" <laughs> <laughs> she, she must be drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I really like that. So, I've you've just done something there, which has really kind of pushed the illumination of that lantern. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what did you do? Did you lay down some kind of uh, soft edge brush tones set to overlay or on a hard light or something? Uh. 
it, it is a combination of overlay and color dodge. Ah, uh, color and, dodge. Yeah, uh, color dodge. Uh, because the color dodge offers uh, a very vivid lighting that you don't uh, it, that automatically blends on the scene. Yeah. So I've really... just realized. Um, I've just seen on your fo open files there. You've mm -hmm. got uh, an instant snow asset from Neo Stock as well. Yeah. I yeah, mean, Matt Seth Barnes created those, our community manager. All of those uh, snow and rain assets, he created those. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been using a lot of new stack bundles, you know, new stack assets. Because, you know... Uh, no, but it's great seeing it being used like this. I could actually put this on the sales page and say, yeah, look at the badass stuff you can create. <laughs> uh you know, yeah that's great that was really yeah. cool christian again thank you so much for sharing your insights and workflow and i look forward to working with you on your course 2021 so <laughs> appreciate that man yeah, guys man. that will do it for this one if you enjoyed hearing me and christian talking about his workflow there's another one popping up right here that will do it for today i hope you enjoyed thanks for tuning in catch you in the next one